Where are all of you from? So, uh, are you from KL or somewhere else? Or? Selangor. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Johor. Hello, Selangor. Johor. Okay. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. I hope all of you are well and safe. Um, oh. Maliha, what did you say you're studying today? I didn't, I didn't pick it up. I'm studying mechanical engineering at Monash University, Australia. Mechanical engineering at Monash University, Malaysia. And one thing, what were you studying? Chemical engineering. Chemical engineering. Okay, so we've got three science-based people here. Uh, is that all in your team? Just the three of you? We have the other two, but we're not sure what they are. You don't know where they are. It's okay. Yeah, the other one got PC problem. Her laptop died. Motherboard. Oh, no. Motherboard KO. Uh. Oh, that's funny. Uh, she, she should have a... a, a, use, a, use, a use a phone. Yeah, I already asked her. Maybe... I don't know, she, is, she told me that she's a little bit stressed out there. Oh no, perfect. Yeah, la, because Baru Habis final, still oh. final, nah, so they're stressed. Okay. Oh no, tough, tough. Okay, I, I, hope she's, I hope she's okay. Uh, so a little bit about myself, I was told that not, you don't really get a profile. So my name's Daniel, I'm currently a director at the Sunway Education Group. Um, I, I graduated in law um, first at the International Islamic University in Malaysia in Gombak, and then I did my master's at the University of Oxford. So I've got, so, and I was a practicing lawyer for a short while. Um, the last, you know, five, six, seven years of my life, I was in government. So I started off at the education ministry. Then I went to the Ministry of Higher Education. And then um, last year, I was at the Ministry of Finance. So I was actually one of the special officers to the Guzafro, the finance minister. Okay. Uh, and then earlier this year, I, I came back to Sunway. I was actually a, a seconded to MOF for a while. So that's a little bit about me and my background. Uh, let's get into your team and your case study, because I'm sure you're eager to do that. So which, which question did you get? Question case study two. Two. The airline. Actually, I think we can share the screen also, Maliha. You can, so you can speak well. Okay. The slide, you yeah. mean? Yeah, the slide. Okay. Although Please, it's yeah. not complete. <laughs> mm, all right, sure. Okay, I'll share the screen. Can you see the screen? Yes. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> okay, this is a question that we get for the case study too. And we have highlight, highlighted a few points. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we haven't uh, finished at the problem statement. Uh, and this is the what we will do. We will change the policy. Not change. We like yeah, improve, not improve. Is it one thing? Improve? Yeah, improve. <laughs> yeah, improve. Not totally change the policy. So this is what we will do. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why don't you Why don't you? Are you all in a position to to uh, simulate it right now, or you're not yet in a position for that? I think we are not ready for the simulation yet. <laughs> okay. No problem. Let's go back to the, the 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 main question, and maybe you can walk me through what are the main issues that you've identified. Okay, so uh, Aina, uh, she's working as a stewardess in, in a speed care airline. It is a private uh, company uh, uh, airline. And then, okay, before kita kerja, mesti kita kena sign agreement. But then, uh, that in the agreement, it stated that if uh, the woman is pregnant, she will need to resign. But Aina concealed the, the fact that she is pregnant. So, bila... <laughs> Uh, the manager tahu dia yes, kena pecat ke? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, yeah, so the airline termi terminated Aina's service. So then uh, when this issue arise, ada uh, macam backlash from employees, especially from women, you know, gender discrimination, something. Yeah, and they believe that the policy should be revised to car untuk for women's equality juga. Yep, macam tu. So we're right at the bottom, the dissatisfaction stemming from the major response. Okay, cool, yeah. Okay, and your next slide. So your main problem statement is? Uh, uh, gender bias and discrimination. We're taking that point to further elaborate for tomorrow. Okay, do you have just one issue or more than one issue? Uh, just one, but I think in the case study, the one that MSDA sent to us, they asked us to identify three. So okay. I think we can choose from this, uh, these four points. Okay, what okay. are these points that you've written here? Uh, there's that biological uh, 
for women that we need to have a pregnancy, right? Because men cannot give birth. And then the welfare for the employees, because women also need to you know, work to sustain their life. And then we have a point like, if we need to find more, to recruit more workers, it will cost more you know, money to find more. And we need the, the career development of the stewardess will be you know, redundant. They cannot proceed their career development. And then there's gender equality. Okay. Um, okay. What else do you have? Interesting. And this one, yeah. How to handle employees' backlash so far. Mm -hmm. And you says here, it explain the, the main reason for the initial policy and avoid being defensive. Mm -hmm. well, how, would you, how would you elaborate on that? Okay, this one, and not my point, but I'm not sure because the one that did it is not here today. So I'll okay. ask her to explain later. Okay, well, I suppose the whole team should, should sort of know where everyone is coming from, right? But I suppose later or tomorrow when we... Yeah, tonight we'll be having a meeting to, yes, you know. We'll, we'll be having a meeting tonight. So we'll okay. like bind together all our ideas and then I think we'll be ready for like the whole flow of it tomorrow uh, during our mentor meeting session. Okay, um, and who will be the, taking the role of the CEO, CFO, CEO, CHRO, and CTO? Uh, Mariha will be the CEO. Okay, proceed, <laughs> Tava. Uh, Sophia will be the CHRO. Uh, okay. I will be the COO. And Elma, Elma, who is not here as well, she will be taking the role of CFO. Uh, one thing? I'll be taking the CTO. Okay, and the one that will be leading the press conference tomorrow? Amaliha and Sophia. Sophia is not here. So that, that's the CEO and the CHRO. C -H -R -O. Okay, so HR and CEO. Okay, yep. yeah, that, that's quite appropriate. Yes. Um, okay, so let's see, where do we wanna... Uh, so as we said executives, how would you resolve the issue? We'll also be making a statement, so I'm just looking back at how they phrase the task. What changes in policy would you initiate? Please justify. And how would you handle it? So what policies would you initiate? So instead of resigning, the stewardess will be given a suitable ground position for a while while they're still in pregnancy state. And then um, and the policy also maintain health insurance for the stewardess while they are on their maternity leave. Okay. So if I was a com if I was a member of the, the the let's say I was in the media and the media goes. Um, but, you know, do you have this rule because you want to avoid pregnancy so that there wouldn't be high turnover? And, you know, um, it's oftentimes if a stewardess is out, that's nine months of uh, paid salary. Um, or oh, sorry, not, not, not nine months, but, you know, when you fly, do you know when they are not allowed to fly anymore? What stage of the pregnancy? First trimester, second trimester, third trimester? Tavanish, you are the... The doctor here. No. Uh, so basically, I think uh, uh, from what what we uh, because I I don't know the exact uh, time of when it's unsafe, but I right. do know that uh, when previously we discussed among our groups, it was agreed that um, it's possibly dangerous since the first trimester itself. But of course, I will have to confirm yep. this first uh, before I come to a conclusion. But usually, anything that is uh, Dangerous to the fetus would be from around uh, the end of the mid of the second trimester up until the birth or the third trimester as okay. well. Okay, so in other words, you're looking at somebody who will be away for like six months or so. Lah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, let me see, how do I... Okay, how, how does the... Okay, so I will ask the cover. Let's say I'm in the media, right? And let's say you are you're the company, you know, you're the speed care airlines. I'll say um, every time, uh, you know, now in times of COVID, it's even more difficult because let's assume now it's post-COVID and people are flying again, and then suddenly, you know, your your stewardesses are, are getting pregnant and they are not able to work. And I'll and I and I'll probably ask, can I get a comment from this chief financial officer? What kind of financial implications this will have on the airlines, considering that margins are already tight and um, you know, finances don't look great at this point in time. Do you really think it's 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 time to reverse such a policy? So, 
who would you like to answer the question because the chief uh, CFO is not here. Oh, CFO is not there. Okay. Yeah, uh, CF, CFO is just not here. Yeah. We have uh, the CTO uh, well, and the COO. You're the COO, right? Yeah, I'm the COO. Okay. Yeah. I'll, ask, I'll ask you then because you're the CEO. So, okay. Mr. CEO, uh, how will this not affect your operations, especially when cost goes up and margins are, are tighter? Because if you are giving them pregnancy leave or grounding them, you still have to find a replacement. Mm, and that's cost. Uh, okay. Um, it is true, but uh, in the case where we, we actually agreed to them continuing their work here, and if there are any uh, health complications that arises from it while they are pregnant and it's not replaced, um, in terms of ethics that would really collide with uh, our uh, ethical guidelines that we have here in our company. So uh, in terms of that, yes, possibly it is more expensive. Uh, it is going to be financially straining, but it is not right, I guess, to put um, those who are working under us under a known, uh, a possible known health complication. Okay, uh, uh, is your CHRO here? No. Uh, no. No. Okay. Then uh, I don't know. Then a question for the CEO or the C, um, C <laughs> so, CTO. So CEO. CEO. Uh, so your manager, um, you know, people are complaining because now because of the actions that uh, let's assume it's a guy he has taken. Uh, they are unhappy that he was so insistent on terminating the stewardess who got pregnant, uh, and now even the other staff, the non-stewardess staff, don't seem to like him and they can't sit there to work with him. Um, are you going to fire him? This, I guess, uh, who's, uh, Maliha, do you want to take this question or shall I take it? Yeah, uh, you can do if you want. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, so uh, I guess um, the whole problem with um, this, this whole issue happening is because uh, it is such a generalized uh, action plan, like even with the terms and conditions, it's not taking a case-to-case -case, uh, basis into, into consideration, like how uh, certain things can just be an anomaly. We have to extrapolate those lines. So I think uh, I would uh, discuss things with uh, other employees as well as uh, the manager himself before taking such a drastic move. Again, it is not um, if the um, uh, terms and conditions itself was created and mended only by this single party and it was done without uh, the consensus or the discussion of the higher authorities, then I guess it is... Uh, Wait, but how can you say that a collective agreement is something that falls under your ambit as Chief Operating Officer? You should be aware of this. Are you throwing your, your, your manager under the bus by not supporting him? Uh, no, I'm not throw, throwing him under the bus. Then again, like uh, this, uh, because like uh, this, uh, what um, these terms and conditions it have, um, they, on, we cannot just uh, uh, what um, dismiss him only based on these terms and conditions. Like if the employees have further complaints, which is which runs beyond these terms and conditions, then I'll look into the fact fact of whether it requires his, his contract termination or not. Otherwise, if it was a company's decision to have this term convenience, it's not right to just terminate his contract because it's not his fault that he have those rules. You know? So we'll sort of uh, discuss things and mend the, the terms and the guidelines or the terms and conditions instead. What about the relationship between the employers, employees? With relationship with? Yeah, I think, I think, okay, so, so I, I won't ask a question because I want to ask your CTO something, I'm mindful of time. Mm -hmm. I think the question also, uh, you also have to look at it from a human aspect, right? Because what has happened is obviously a breakdown in the relationship between the manager and the female employees. That's why the question, if you notice, it doesn't just talk about the stewardesses who are frustrated. It was the female employees who started getting frustrated, right? If you look at the last line, the dissatisfaction stemming from the manager's point became more visible through their work performance. They believe because... Um, See, sorry, it's, it's not the highlighted line, but it's uh, the bottom. It says, this led to a bigger backlash by most female employees of Speak Airlines. That means across. Am I right? So you have mm -hmm. to be mindful of that. Lah. It's also, now it's, it's, one might even say they have even created a hostile work environment for the female workers in the airlines. Okay, so I'm just going to change track now. Uh, so CTO, since you're, CTO is like, why do I ask the CTO? Okay, I'm going to ask you a question. Um, 
you know, one of your solutions, as mentioned by your CEO earlier, is to find the pregnant stewardesses uh, alternatives on the ground. Uh, but, you know, our understanding is you already have all the employers for those purposes. And now with automation, which our understanding is most airlines are moving into, you're going to need even less person on the ground. You know, you can replace uh, ticketing systems and front counter people with, with machines, but you can't do that with stewardesses. So what, what, I, what do you think your role as CTO will eventually um, make these efforts difficult? Actually, I think it's quite difficult also because the stewardess, their job is not similar as the other positions. So actually, I would recommend they take their leave. <laughs> <laughs> because actually it's quite... Uh, yeah, I can say. Go ahead, go ahead. Mm -hmm. I would recommend leave, a uh, refresher. How to, take, how, how to take leave from your second trimester onwards. That's six more months to your pregnancy. You know, that's six months of leave and then two months... Uh, maternal post birth leave <laughs> that's eight months out of, of, of work you know how la bankrupt bankrupt because one. as if if she go to a ground job uh, also it's like a physical job so um, so I think we should discuss this also uh, yeah everything also discussed on uh, this press conference got no answers uh. mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. I'm just pulling your leg. Okay, I'm just playing devil's advocate. Okay. You might find you might find nicer people. I can be a bit harsh, right? Maybe mm -hmm. Azwan, you should make me a judge for this competition. <laughs> make the teams uh, suffer a bit. No, no, okay. Okay. Um, let's see. So, so CEO, uh, that's a question. You know, this is something that's quite big. Um, the company is now seen in the eyes of the public as a company that has you know uh, discriminatory policies. Uh, what does the company plan to do to turn the perception of the public uh, towards your favor again? Wait, I'm thinking. <laughs> quick, quick, think, think. Wait, Wait, can you uh, repeat the question again? Sorry. Okay. Um, so I'm again. I'm I'm media, right? I'll say, uh, uh, Madam CEO, uh, this controversy has caused. Um, big public relations fallout on your company they are known you know now your airlines is known as a, a discriminatory airlines people are now going to run over to your competitors uh, what plans do you have in place to undo this pr disaster for your company in terms of public relation i don't know you answer uh, <laughs> i would say uh, I think we cannot change uh, what we have done if we decided to, you know, when we focus more on gender equality, we cannot change what we have presented to the media. So I think we should, I'm not sure. Okay, think, think about it, think about it. So, so you, know, you don't have to answer me right now. And obviously there are always better ways of answering. Um, mm -hmm. I think one question I might even ask is, how would you manage your shareholders, right? Considering, you know, just now Mr. CEO said that they are willing to absorb the cost, uh, higher alternatives, uh, give them, uh, uh, give them um, groundwork. If they don't have groundwork, your CTO has said that we will send them for leave for eight months. Uh, how are you going to manage your shareholders, man? They're, they're going to freak out. <laughs> it's okay. No, no, think about it. I think, think I think it's a very good question because like we really didn't discuss among ourselves of the financial implications of certain yeah. decisions, you know. So it's really it's I guess it's the loophole in our our way of answering as uh, we were only thinking of the human side. We didn't yeah. really think of like the money involved and how much loss losses will go through. But actually, it is like say like uh just for the conversation's purpose, I'd just like yeah, to sure. ask you like uh if you were in this particular position, right, uh, how would you actually like uh, take into account the financial implications? Because like currently we are in the pandemic and uh, regardless of whatever, whatever things, whatever decision we take to ensure that our company runs ethically, we, there are, there's always going to be a financial implication. So it's, it's definitely going to affect the financials somehow rather 
so how would you actually answer in in a way to sort of uh, make your shareholders stakeholders and the media have this trust on you that you can handle the economy behind it like how, okay. how would you answer? very good question uh, so how i would probably approach it is i think one way for you guys is to think of if you were richard branson sir richard branson or if you were tanshri tony fernandez you know how would you imagine someone like that doing something like this i think that's that's the first question and that's already a, a clue at what you could do the second point is this um, your company is obviously facing okay sorry maybe i'll make it easier the second point is uh, look do a bit of research not too much you don't have to do much quite easy to find um, on uh, sustainable financing practices and what i mean by this is you will want to look at um, organizations or investors who are willing to invest for ethical companies uh, or you may want to look at um, some some organizations they actually even have reports where ethical financing is something that is quite new in today's day and age in other words what you'll say is yes we're going to probably take a hit for our bottom line our revenue will suffer because we are not going to increase uh, operational cost by giving these stewardesses more time off however we feel that that's a fair trade off because we feel um, evidence has shown that companies who are ethical and non discriminatory and uphold human rights are still able to make good money and then you should find examples of such companies right so for example apple um amazon uh, etc 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 so what you're trying to say is when companies start adopting non discriminatory practices there's always going to be a period in time uh in that transition where you'll see a bit of a you might see a bit of a dip because it's an investment but in the long run you're not only are you having a company that can or you're confident that you recoup the loss but you're also confident that um it makes for better business more loyal customers in the long run make sense Okay. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, the, the other aspect, of, I know we've only probably got about five minutes left. Um, presentation is also very important, right? In your in your case study aspect. Um, so, uh, how how you know are you all going to come out uh, all guns blazing, or uh, are you going to how are you what what kind of tone are you going to strike? Yeah, five minutes. Uh, tone meaning like how how are we going to answer the, those questions or what do you mean that yeah okay okay so let, let me let me try to phrase it this way um, CEO CEO yeah then yeah. <laughs> quiet quiet really <laughs> don't worry don't laugh don't laugh don't worry I'm I'm your mentor no I'm thinking I'm thinking okay okay so 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 what you mentioned yeah um, today so just answer me yes or no lah you're you're ready to change your company's policy yes okay. uh it's because you realize that you that this practice is discriminatory mhm so you've had a you've had a insaf lah you tiba-tiba insaf betul tak okay okay if i was a journalist i'll say if your stewardess never complained would you change if my stewardess so insaf tak was... jelas betul tak uh-huh. no no no, uh-huh. no don't agree with me no 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 <laughs> it, 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 i will insaf, change you will change I'll okay i'll change yeah Okay good. So, uh what I'm trying to say is when you start your 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 presentation, uh don't make it seem like you're changing just because of a complaint. You get what I mean? You are changing because your company realizes that you need to change. Okay, I I I'm trying not to give you I mean I suppose as a mentor I can give you a bit more lah. Nanti bagi too much kan macam to the unfair advantage and so i think i think what you would want to do is when you when you start off a press statement you may want to go a bit more higher level you can say look the world is you know something like what 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 would tony fernandez what would obama do right you say the world is changing society is changing acceptance is changing the collective agreement that exists is like a historical remnant of policies which are outdated and no longer no longer relevant in the 21st century am i right and then so from that sort of introduction you can talk about what's currently happening like recently it has come to um the top management's uh attention that such and such has happened then you lay down the facts am i right there was an we have a collective agreement with the students for the and therefore we had a manager who had to take action and the manager had made had taken a decision based on the collective agreement am i right so that's part two then you go into uh we understand this has created backlash you know there's been a negative press therefore we are here today to come clean or we are here today to address the media but it's then you can say like there are two things to address then you sort of go into it 
You see my point? Yeah. Okay. Uh, wait, so I never did a any press statement <laughs> before. So okay. what do you suggest the tone that we should use? Um, there's, a, there's a rule in, 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 in PR where every opportunity to, to talk to the press is an opportunity to uh, do public relations, right? What I mean by this is, while you are addressing a challenge, you also want to talk up your company's values. You want to talk up your people and how you have faith and trust in them. Okay. So the tone would, but the tone is never to be arrogant, never to be defensive, but to also signal that your you your your you know kalau insaf tu your your insaf lah. Uh, but while you 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 have this 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 insafan or this this sort of like a, a awakening or a sort of like realization, you're also very firm on astute on the and on the technology on the business side of things. That's why earlier I was asking some questions about how do you maintain your your finances in these times. Ken, yeah. does that make sense? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Okay, uh, I think we've got like a minute left. And any last questions? I mean, we'll probably see each other tomorrow. I know that you all have had limited ish uh, time to yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, Daniel, I have one question. Uh, how useful will be providing uh okay so how useful will be providing uh evidence such as legal statements or like uh statistics would be in answering the questions would you feel more um say i'm lost along the way right in answering the question uh and it's like tricky and i provide statistics and give my sort of take on it but it's not so strong will it still make a significant change. Significant okay, we've got impact. 30 seconds. So what I'm thinking is find data, research, or, or evidence that supports uh, good positions. So I'll give you an example. If you can find evidence of airlines that have adopted um, pro-maternity pro maternity practices, use those examples. If you can find, like I said, uh, investors who are more willing to invest in ethical companies, use those examples. So use examples that support your change in policy. Uh, and then those examples will be, those examples, statistics will be good. I don't know them. That's your team's job. Okay, they're going to close the room in a